by Nathan Vardy and Hank Tucker Ramsey Musalan returned to his desk after a quick trip to the bathroom on September 10, 2012, to find his assistant visibly shaken. She informed him that a call had come in about Musalam's boss, Robert McKeon. He had just killed himself in his southern Connecticut mansion at the age of 58. Musalam jumped in his car and raced the 40 miles up I-95 from Midtown Manhattan to Darien, Connecticut. He was close to McKeon and knew his boss was struggling with his mental health. But Musalam never expected McKeon would take his own life. He was a force of nature. Through sheer will, McKeon had worked himself up from the streets of the Bronx, where his father was a Drake's Cakes delivery man supporting seven children, to the upper echelons of finance. Musalam was in shock. It was just so devastating, Ms. Salam says. For as long as I had known him, we had worked together. It was tough. I had never experienced anything like this. While McKeon's American dream had soured into a nightmare, Musalam's was about to soar. He returned to the office to devise a plan to stave off the collapse of Veritas Capital, the private equity firm McKeon had founded in 1992. Musalam had come on board in 1998 and was Veritas' second highest ranking executive. The morning after the suicide, Musalam began holding emergency meetings with the company's investors. McKeon's death meant they suddenly had the right to tear up their commitments to fund Veritas deals. Instead, Musalam persuaded them to bet on him. He also cut a deal with McKeon's family that would transfer ownership of McKeon's majority stake in Veritas, mostly to Musalam. Years later, the hasty deal would produce bad blood, and a lawsuit, between Musalam and McKeon's family. But these maneuvers laid the foundation for a stunning Wall Street success.